everybody. I am doing a new vlog where I think I'm going to talk about plotty books. So books that are sort of plot-centered, also character-centered as well, and are really about that plot moving forward. You know what I mean? I asked on Instagram some suggestions for plotty books, a book to get swept up in, right? Something that you just want to know what's going to happen, what's going on with the characters, what's going on with the story. Um, I kind of wanted to be taken out of the internal workings of the mind, which I feel like is what I read a lot of the time. A sort of inward looking, um, I don't want to say self-centered, but it is like centering the self narratives. Um, um, so I am currently reading Beasts of a Little Land by Juhei Kim. And uh, this is a historical fiction about um, Korea in the early 20th century. So, well, like post-World War I, pre-World War II. So about the 1920s and on. So far, I'm about halfway through. Um, and you know, I'm really liking it. It's linear. The plot just chugs forward which I like there's no like moving back and forth it's just like a classic plotty novel with wonderful cast of characters and um also a historical fiction setting so I'm like yes um it's covering the Japanese occupation of Korea and follows um Essentially, it's kind of complicated in the <clears throat> way that the characters are forming, if that makes sense. Um, there's like all these at the beginning, it's a little like, it's a little family tree-esque. You have to really pay attention to the characters, but once you get more into it, it kind of gets settled on the characters that are going to be focused on. But um, um, for the most part, they're in Seoul, and it's following a young... Um, courtesan named Jade and a young um, kind of beggar orphan boy named Jung Ho I believe that's his name um, yes and so they it's kind of about their friendship and it's a little bit of a forbidden friendship because their class difference um, and Jade is a very like high class courtesan um, so uh, yeah, I'm learning a lot about kind of where courtesans, uh, courtesans, or I don't know, huh, um, kind of where they were in the class hierarchy in Korea. It's really interesting. Um, and also learning a lot about Korean resistance to the Japanese occupation um, and the like beginnings of communism in Korea. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting, um, pretty well written, and it's a debut. I'm I'm pretty impressed. Um, I will say so far the writing is not like absolutely blowing me away, but the storytelling is really well done, um, as well as the character development. And right now, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So, um, this book is doing just that. Um, I am also listening to Bel Canto by Anne Patchett on audio and I also have the physical book so I'll probably be maybe finishing it by actually just reading it um which is also a sort of plotty book that is about um it's kind of also complicated and has lots of different characters in it but it's about an opera singer who goes to sing and visit a South American country. So far the country has not been named. My guess is that it's something maybe like Colombia or Venezuela. Not totally sure. Um, and the country has invited this very rich Japanese businessman who probably owns, I think it sounds like Sony or something like that. Like it's fictionalized obviously, but um, they invite him to come because he loves opera and they've said, okay, we've got brought your favorite opera singer. Please come to our country to visit. They're hoping that he will build factories in their country to 
help give people jobs because they're clearly struggling economically and there's a lot of political issues and corruption as well um and so it's this very fancy like dinner party set in the vice president's home um that very early on um in the book uh is taken over by uh a group of terrorists who are holding them all hostage because they thought the president was going to be there um but it turns out the president wasn't there uh and so then it's just sort of this interesting hostage situation with a lot of different characters um it's very interesting because the characters are all from around the globe so narratively um Patchett has to constantly talk about translation and how things are being translated and how some people don't understand what other people are saying and it could get a little annoying at times when I was reading it but then I think that's possibly the point that she's trying to convey of like how hard it can be to communicate with one another when we don't speak the same language um I think something cheesy is gonna be said probably about how music defies language because the opera singer is like part of this um I'm not sure how I feel about Bel Canto yet um I haven't read a lot of Ann Patchett um I read State of Wonder a long time ago and it was okay I've never been super blown away by her so we'll see this was this is supposed to be her best book is Bel Canto so um anyway that was kind of summary so far I'm probably maybe about a little less than halfway through on this one too so those are the two little plotty books I'm reading right now. Um, I'm going skiing this weekend. Um, I'm excited. I'm actually going to see my parents and um, some friends. I'm going down to Bend, Oregon. So it's going to be a lot of driving. I'm going to be in the car a lot. And I don't really read in the car. And I'm going to be with my boyfriend. And we usually just like talk and like to have fun and so we don't really listen to audiobooks either because usually we can't agree on what we want to listen to um so I don't know if I'll be getting a ton of reading done this weekend but that is totally fine there is no rush um but I will check back in and let you guys know when I make progress with these two books um yeah, because sometimes it's nice to just get swept up in a story and not have to be in the depressed mind of someone, which is a lot of what I read. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Bye. How's the trip going? Good. Yeah? How much traffic are we in? Hours. Hours of traffic! It's super fun! <laughs>
and form and some fun socks from Bagu. And I'm just feeling elated by these tiny little cutie things that I bought. So, um, loving it. Loving it. And about the reading, I did read last night for the first time since Thursday, and it is Tuesday. So yeah, I didn't read for like three, four days, which is really weird for me. I usually read every day. So yeah. And was I wearing a beanie and the sweatshirt last time I filmed myself talking about books? Yes, I was. <laughs> I was gone this weekend and it was a whirlwind trip. It was super fun. I got to see my parents. I got to see some great old friends. Got to go skiing. Um, went on a beautiful hike um, in Eastern Oregon. It was just an all around lovely trip, but it was 12 hours of driving in, you know, three days. So half the time I was in the car and I don't read in the car and didn't have a lot of downtime. Um, and then I've had a really busy um, beginning of the week at work. So I've got a lot going on. Um, yeah, but I did read last night and I picked up Beasts of A Little Land again. I am now more than halfway through. Not a ton, but I probably have about 150 pages left. Um, and it's getting good. Um, again, I still stick by what I said before that the prose is not very incredible, but the characters and the plot are great. Um, and I like how she's bringing in a lot of different aspects of Korean history, especially at this time, and is really building up what we know is to come. I know this is really silly, but I really like that about historical fiction when you'll, you'll be reading it and be like, we know what's coming, we know what's coming, oh my god, we know what's coming, because you know you know history. So you know that the Korean War is coming, um, and that the North and South are going to split, and communism is coming, and the U.S. are going to come. You know, you're like, it's happening. Um, I don't know what it is. I love it. Sometimes I really like that about historical fiction. Sometimes I could see how it could get old to some people or feel formulaic. Um, but I really like how uh, Juhei Kim is really... Um, building these up with these characters and also um, being very generous and kind and understanding to the complexities of this history um, and particularly communism in Korea and its origins and why and its relationship with Russia um, and the United States and Japan's occupation like it's really fascinating I'm learning so much and I just so far, I'm like really into this book um, and having a good time, having a good plotty little time. Um, yeah, so, so far into this. Um, but yeah, that's all I've read because I have not been reading that much at all. Um, let's see. Some other book news I could talk about. Um, the Women's Prize was announced um, today. And so I thought I would maybe share three books from it that I want to read because I'm probably not going to read the whole long list. Um, it's too much. I, it's just not going to happen. Okay, so to start, um, The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki. I've been wanting to read that for a while. Um, I don't know why I've been sitting on it for so long, probably because it's pretty chunky. Um, but A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki is one of my favorite books. So I would love to give this one a chance. I know it gets a little out there and a little weird, but I kind of like how she does that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, and she's a Pacific Northwest author, lives in, uh, British Columbia, I believe. So yeah, I'm excited to read that. Um, and then I am really intrigued mostly due to Simon um hi Simon um for uh the island of the missing trees um by Elif Shaf Shafak um because it just sounds um very interesting to me I like that it seems to have sort of a long sweeping story 
um, that looks back at the past and your connection to the land of maybe your family and your ancestors. And this book seems interesting to me because it's very much focusing on the maybe the plants um, that are from where um, your ancestors are from. So I'm, I'm just intrigued by it um, and want to know more. Um, and they are a Turkish writer, so I am curious to read more Turkish authors. So yeah, that is The Island of the Missing Trees that I was intrigued by. Uh, and then I'm interested in Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper Smith, um, if that's how you say it. Um, so I actually have this checked out from the library right now because uh, Matthew Sharapa um, blurbed it um, in his best books of 2021, I believe. And so I put it on hold the library. I just got it a couple weeks ago. So maybe I'll pick this one up soon. Um, and then the last thing I'll say about these, this prize, um, is that I was really happy to see Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason, um, nominated because I think that that book, uh, was so good. And it seems like there's some really interesting books. I don't have a huge thing about prizes. I think that they're just fun because usually it opens up more titles of books to me that I have never heard of. Like there's a lot on here that I haven't heard of, um, I'm kind of intrigued by maybe the Paper Palace, um, as well as the Exhibitionist. So there's there's just books in here that I haven't heard of. So it's it's fun to just see some things getting attention that maybe are not getting buzz in other other parts um, of things. So uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm definitely not committing to read the long list, all right? But I'm just highlighting some that I'm interested in reading. So that is my little thoughts on the women's prize. We're starting our hike. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> you excited? What is that a bad thing you. to say? No! <laughs> <laughs> booktube related mail um sunny's book truck uh hat so i will open it and show you hold on okay here we go oh my gosh from cj thanks julie you are hot and cool wow feeling it oh and it comes with this cute bookmark we love it um all right so i'm gonna put it on i have a big head so i'm just gonna make it bigger um don't judge my hair just got back from hiking oh hell yeah lit thick baby we love it Proud supporter. Thank you, CJ. people. Um, I am here to actually talk about books. Can you believe it? Um, cause so little of this vlog has involved reading. Um, yeah, in the last two weeks I've only read one book, um, cause I've been very busy. Um, and it was a little bit of a chunky one. Um, so yeah, I finished Beasts of a Little Lamb by Juhei Kim today. Um, yeah, and it took me a while to get through this. It's a little over 400 pages or right at 400 pages so longer than my usual read plus being busy um 
equals me not reading a lot of books in the last two weeks. <laughs> that was the equation. Um, yeah, so I finished this this morning and towards the second half of the book, so far I it started to feel like it was unraveling a little bit. Um, time started jumping a lot faster towards the end um, than it did in the beginning, which kind of made the narrative feel a little rushed. I've noticed that with a lot of books that books will start out slow and it does sort of feel like the ending sometimes is rushed to wrap up. Um, but overall, I definitely liked this book. This was a good historical fiction. Um, which I think are kind of hard to find sometimes. So I really enjoyed reading Beasts of a Little Land. Um, I thought the characters were all pretty complex um, and that the plot was moving. It, it moved forward. It really felt um, like you wanted to keep reading. Um, I also, at the same time though, do feel like some of the characters' relationships were a little unbelievable. A character would do something to another character and I'd be like that stuff felt like an overreaction or we didn't get the proper build up to really have that emotional release of like understanding why that character would act that way so um as far as the character development in this book I feel like it could have been a little better but that's also just my opinion um I think overall it's a really beautiful story um and you know very heartbreaking, um, very realistic about the horrors of war and colonization. Um, and yeah, I think that uh, it was truly, truly, um, at the end of the day, a good read. Um, and I learned a lot. Um, and I think this author really approached the subject um, very gracefully um, because there's a lot to cover. Um, you know, talking about Korea from like 1910 to the 1960s, there's so much that happens. And I feel as though the author did a good job at kind of bringing it all together um, and summarizing it. Uh, yeah, so I really liked Beasts of a Little Land. I could say more, but I think that you're going to have to read it for yourself to find out. It's kind of one of those... Um, one of those books, um, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I'm glad I read this. It's also like a due back at the library today. So perfect timing because I need to return it. Um, and then I think I'm gonna now pick up Bel Canto from where I left off um, from the audiobook. I don't even know where that would be. Um, I'm maybe like halfway through. I need to like look on where I'm at in the audiobook and then go from there. Um, I was saying before that this book feels like it's doing a little bit too much. Uh, and I'm skeptical of where it's going and if it's going to make, uh, have a satisfying ending. So we'll see. Um, but yes, this is my other little plotty read that I am getting through. Um, <laughs> So hopefully I can finish this before this vlog is over so I can talk about more than just one book. Um, yeah, but I'm also reading, hold on. So I've been listening to Wayward Lives Beautiful Experiments on audio. And um, I actually picked up this book a long time ago. I actually think I found it in a little free library, like maybe over a year ago. And I've had it on my shelves, been meeting to get to it. Um, and I decided to start listening to it on audio. I actually haven't even touched the print version yet because I just started the audio this week. Um, and I'm kind of regretting it because listening to it on audio can feel a little jolting. Um, like for example, um, there are pictures in the print that I, I think I'm missing some context by listening to it on audio. So I might start reading this in print. But if you are curious what this book is about, this is a narrative nonfiction book um, that is about 
the revolution of black intimate life that unfolded in Philly Philadelphia and New York at the beginning of the 20th century. I've been really excited to read this book because it is a really cool look at how to interpret um, primary sources found in archives. So, and that's something that I'm interested in my work as well. So I'm really fascinated um, with how this author is using um, archival resources to kind of try to piece together gaps in history. Um, it's so far really interesting and there's been a lot of kind of individual vignettes um, about uh, different people she's trying to piece together and then also right now we're focusing on W.E.D. Du Bois who was um, a black sociologist in the early 20th century, maybe end of the 19th century even. Um, and it's really, really interesting also to how it's looking at the field of anthropology and sociology in the lens that was then put on um, black people at this time, um, the lens of modernity and civilization and all this stuff. Um, when really so often um, these communities were just doing what they needed to do to survive and thrive and live full, beautiful lives. And that's kind of what um, the author is trying to do here is fill in those gaps. I was interested in this time period in general, um, kind of late 19th century, early 20th century. I, ever since I read Mrs. Dalloway earlier this year, I've kind of been feeling that. Um, I really want to read uh, Nella Larson's Passing. Um, I also want to start watching The Gilded Age on HBO. I am just really excited to keep reading this um, and will let you know how these pan out. So that's where I'm at. Not a ton of reading. I'm sorry. I, you know, there's been a lot of fun outdoor content, traveling content. Um, you can see that I my dog scratching content. Um, I just got back from the garden store. I actually just got a new plant. Here she is. She was half off because she was not doing so hot, but I think I can bring her back to life. So I repotted her and I've been wanting one of these peace plants for a while and they're always way too overpriced, I think. And this one has the pink leaves, which I love. So very excited. <laughs> I got some seeds today, zinnias, sunflowers, delphinium, these really interesting garnet star sunflowers that I'm excited about, um, snapdragons, hopefully these will grow, I've had trouble with these in the past, cosmos, which are my sturdy, always grow, easy to grow flowers, and some false Queen Anne's lace. Oh, and of course, you can't forget the stars of the show, my dahlias. So I got these. I love the style of dahlia. I think they're really pretty. And then I'm going for these dark maroon colored dahlias this year because I always forget dahlias last until the fall. And this, these two colors, I think, will be really fun to have in like September and early October for flowers. So anyway, uh, I thought I would just check in slash maybe wrap up this vlog here and let you know that I'm gonna DNF this. Um, I'm about halfway through, a little more than halfway through and I just don't care. <laughs> I'm not excited to pick it up. Um, I don't really care what's gonna happen. Um, if I can make a comment, um, I feel like this book got maybe a lot of attention and awards and buzz because it came out in 2001, which is when 9-11 happened and it involves terrorists. So people were like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a really unforgiving analysis, but I'm just sort of like, okay. It just feels dated. The way that the terrorists are perceived in this, um, when clearly, uh, you know, as un maybe unintelligent or uh, maybe it changes, but I'm just sort of over it. Um, 
yeah and just uncomfortable about like Ann Patchett writing about like an unnamed South American country that she's not from I don't know it just feels a little weird I'm, I'm just not vibing with it it's not hitting it's not working for me um the music is what brings us together thing is a little too cheesy for me and I'm not into this so I'm just gonna stop reading it and move on to something that I'm excited about because I'm gonna I won't say I'm in a slump but in the last two weeks I have only read one book I'm a little feeling weird because that's I know it's not about numbers but that is not a lot of books for me in that amount of time. So I'm feeling a little strange, um, but that's where I'm at. That was the reading journey the last couple weeks. Um, sorry, I literally only finished one book. Um, probably not that exciting for all you all, but hopefully you got to see some pretty outdoor spring, snowy, lovely things. And I'm going to end this vlog here. I keep thinking all my vlogs are chaotic, but maybe that's just how I'm feeling. Hope you have a lovely day uh, and are enjoying the time change, the extra light. How nice is that? I'm very excited about it. Um, if you can see behind me, I got some daffodils at the farmer's market yesterday. The flowers are back at the farmer's market, so I'm very excited. You can see my dog snoozing. All right, I'm gonna go, but I hope you all have a lovely, lovely rest of your day, week, whatever, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.